Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, we think it's time we talk about Iron Banner. Check out the new PvP map and introduce the cosplay Cosmodrome. Trust us, it's really cool. Lord Saladin continues to show why he has the metal to inspire the likes of people like Zavala. His inner strength has once more become a vital part of the evolving Destiny 2 narrative. And the team thought it was high time that his Iron Banner event reflected his resurgence in the story. That and Rift is back? Oh, alongside a brand new map, we also have a nifty new initiative we're calling Cosplay Cosmodrome, and an update from our specialist team that has been digging deep into the perplexing world of emails. But first, Iron Banner. Oh boy. This is it, fellas. Iron Banner is finally becoming the in-game PvP event we always hoped for. Will this fix it? We'll see. Let the Iron Banner shape you. Season 17 is just over the horizon, and we're talking extensively about weapon changes, gambit tweaks, and more. With the events of Season the Risen showing Lord Saladin in a new role, it seems fitting that there be a few changes to Iron Banner as well. Here to talk about what's next, including the return of Rift and core philosophies that surround modes like Iron Banner, is Bungie's own principal designer, Alan Blaine. So from Alan there, hey there. So funny story, when we were looking for the first thing for the newly reformed Rituals team to focus on and make an impact, we had originally aimed at refreshing Iron Banner. Then, the first hockey casino weekend happened, and we pivoted to Trials of Osiris and started on what would become the Season of the Lost revamp. Nine months later, and here we are, back at Iron Banner. Can you believe it, guys? It was actually the hockey emblem win trading thing that was happening like last year that caused the team to shift from Iron Banner to the trials. Oh! Now Iron Banner is a celebration of PvP for everyone. We want people playing every day, playing with their friends, wearing their flaming Iron Banner armor, and using Iron Banner weapons. When you land into the tower, we wanted to feel different and special. Same as all of our annual events like the Dawning or Festival of the Lost. Iron Banner is one of our core entry points for adding new and different ideas into the Crucible. We love the hunt aspect of control. Even if it has a snowballing issue. What if we did the same thing with other modes? What about if we add new modes? Ah, new modes. Bungie, come on. Rift ain't new. What you talking about? Lower the barriers and widen the funnel for players. Everyone should be able to play Iron Banner and access the core reward paths. New lights and Destiny 1 Alpha veterans alike. We want core rewards that are focused on team play and participation, not just winning matches and skillful play. Those should accelerate rewards rather than lock them off. Without further ado, here's what's up next. Picture this. When you first land into the tower in season 17 for Iron Banner, you'll notice something new. What's that? Music? Oh my god, it's Bracca's Forge! Upon landing, you'll see players clustered up around the area where Eva Levante, aka Space Grandma, usually stands. But instead of the usual festive decorations, it's all smoke and fire. Guardians gather around in all manner of flaming armor, and in the middle stands Lord Saladin, known as Bracca's Forge. Not the only thing he's known for with the cabal, right? My man be slinging it, be laying it down, keeping Kaido satisfied. Now, power level on PvP has always been confusing to new players, and it's quite different than the normal Crucible. We want to open the mode to more players, so power level is now disabled in Iron Banner. To clarify, power level will still be active in Trials of Osiris as the PvP in-game mode. Look at that, man. Power level is now disabled in Iron Banner. Thank God. I don't care what you say. I do not like power level enable. It's already one thing to, like, level up weapons to go inside of Trials, but you're just leveling up the most meta stuff. But inside of Iron Banner, I like to just experiment, but then you run out of materials to upgrade. So nine times out of ten, we end up using meta stuff because that's the only thing we have leveled up. We also know that having Iron Banner be controlled for the last few years has grown a little stale for some. So for season 17, we are bringing back an old favorite, Rift. More on the mode itself later in the TWAB, but our intention is to switch out Iron Banner mode every season. Sometimes it might be brand new or a returning mode. Sometimes it might be an interesting twist on an existing mode. So earning rewards. Iron Banner tokens will be removed starting in season 17 and those will be replaced by a similar ranking system likened to Saint 14 and shacks. Earn Iron Ingrams while ranking up and unlock cosmetic rewards and materials for your time playing. But it's not just the reward track that's changing. Saladin is also getting a full focusing implementation as well. Players will be able to convert Iron Ingrams into current Iron Banner weapons or armor sets that have been earned previously for a cost with in-game materials. In future seasons, we will be looking at adding more, including legacy Iron Banner gear and cosmetics. All right, so good, right? Focus in loot, focus in Ingrams. If you were hoping, though, to craft Iron Banner weapons, this does not look to be the case. We'll see, though. To break it down simply, here's how the revamp Iron Banner reputation will work. Play matches, with each match earning more towards Iron Banner reputation. Win matches to earn a small bonus based on your current Iron Banner rank. Wear Iron Banner armor, or just as ornaments on your own non-Iron Banner gear, and equip Iron Banner weapons to max out your gear multiplier at 200%. Dude, Bungie has been, like, leaning into that a lot more, right? Like, the seasonal 
armor this past season, uniform officer granting more psychogenic intel when completing activities, and of course, wearing the full set. So again, Bungie's doing the same thing with Iron Banner. Now, five total pieces must be equipped, though please remember this includes Iron Banner armor and Iron Banner ornaments. And that's the beautiful thing here, guys. You don't have to just equip Iron Banner armor. You could just do it as an ornament. Now, complete the daily Iron Banner challenges to tack on 100% to your challenge multiplier for the rest of the week. Look at that. Look at that. Like a nightfall multiplier, right? Yes, this means for each challenge. So you could substantially increase your reputation gains. Use an Iron Banner emblem for also an additional 10% emblem multiplier. Now, all modifiers will be listed on the launch screen seen below. Oh, looky there. Rift rules. All right, let's just go over this real quick. First up, to win, score more points than your opponent by collecting the spark and then igniting your opponent's rift. Now, the spark spawns in the center of the map at the beginning of the match and after a team scores. Also drops at the spark runner's location upon death. Rift. Each team has a rift on their side of the map. Carry the spark into your opponent's rift to score. Defend your rift from opposing spark runners. All right, so as far as the rule sets here, nothing has changed. It's still Rift from Destiny 1, right? What really changes the game of Rift is really the maps. Can you imagine defending your Rift with six Stasis Warlocks, all with Stacy turrets, Osmeo Mansi gloves on top of that, so even two per, you would have 12 turrets. 12 turrets! Literally waiting for that poor soul with the spark to peek his head, and he would probably be instantly frozen. It is going to be hilarious to see how that plays out. Now, the Iron Banner rank boost. Look at this. You see the actual point gain that is increased, and of course, the multiplier. So it shows challenges completed, zero of four, Iron Banner gear equipped, zero of five, and then the Iron Banner emblem, one of one. I really like that Bungie's leaning into these multipliers, though. Again, more ways to get reputation gains and get them fast. Now, daily challenges. For the first four days of each Iron Banner week, Guardians will unlock a new daily challenge. These challenges unlock each day, whether you complete them or not. So if you log in on Friday, you can do them all in succession if you want to. Rewards will also stack reputation bonuses for the remainder of the week alongside a Pinnacle Iron Ingram. The weekly bounties that typically award Pinnacles have been deprecated appropriately to balance out this change. I'm curious how many Pinnacle Iron Ingrams we can get. Is it like every reset? Surely it's not just one per week because we're getting four right now from the bounties. So maybe it's unlimited. As many resets as we can get in in a single week, we can get Pinnacles. I mean, you could top that level off fairly fast with Iron Banner then if you're playing enough. Now, becoming an Iron Lord. It's not easy being cheesy or an Iron Lord. So there should be something a little extra spicy to reflect that hard work. With these new Iron Banner reworkings, a new seal and title will also be available to earn. Don't expect this one to be simple or an easy grab. Being an Iron Lord is no joke. It requires dedication, gumption, and some spiffy gear. To set expectations for the new seal and title, Iron Lord hopefuls can expect to spend around 15 to 20 hours to unlock this flare. Some of the more hardcore players could unlock this one in one week if focused, but we expect most players to need a second week, maybe even a second season. Intrepid Iron Lords will be able to gild the title in season 18. Now becoming a young wolf. New quest, who dis? For anyone that may be scratching their head at some of these changes, Lord Saladin will offer a brand new quest that will introduce all of these features and demonstrate how they work. You only have to run through it once per account. But with this reset, we wanted everyone to get the same introduction. Even Iron Banner veterans will need to do this. In fact, you'll need to start this quest to even access the Iron Banner node. To even out this change and to welcome the new quest, we will no longer be producing the seasonal Iron Banner quest, which brings us to our next point. Saladin hangs his out to lunch be back in 15 minutes sign. Due to his increased responsibilities on Kaido's war council, he now runs Iron Banner in the tower just twice a season. Because Iron Banner will be more in line with those annual events, you'll never see Iron Banner run during those annual festivities. For season 17, Iron Banner will be running during these times. Week 2 starting on May the 31st. Week 8 starting on July the 12th. Holy crap, only twice per season? Oh man, we're gonna have to get it, dude. Like, if you don't get whatever loot you're wanting from Iron Banner, like, if you happen to be busy for both of those weeks, GG's? FOMO is real? Now, Rift is back. If you like us, Rift Rift has a very special place in that PvP playing heart of yours. We're excited to bring back the staple, but for those that may be new to what this is, here's what you need to know. Rift is an objective-based crucible mode that plays more like a game of soccer or rugby, but with pew pew weapons and no passing than it does clash. Teams of Guardians will attempt to take the spark from the middle of the map into the base of the enemy team and dunk it into the enemy Rift. One dunk equals one point. The first to make it to five points or to have the upper hand by the 10 minute mark wins. Dude, I just I've got so many strategies in my head. Can you imagine an Ursa Furiosa Titan or like two Ursa Furiosa Titans blocking for the Spark Runner and they just waltz right in there and ignite the Rift? Now, a Spark appears in the center of the map a few seconds after a match starts or a point is scored and can be picked up by interacting with it for a couple seconds. The Spark itself is a buff that allows full weapon and ability usage aside from Super. Oh, oh wow. So you'll be able to access
actively play. For the first five seconds after picking up the spark, or for a few seconds after taking damage, both teams receive a waypoint for the spark holder. After that, the waypoint only remains for the spark holder's own team. Marking the spark holder for your teammate is important. If you die while carrying the spark, it drops to the ground where you died, or nearby if the spot is not navigable. Dude, does this mean, like, if ability usage goes up greatly while holding the spark, and you're a hunter, can you just keep going in biz over and over again, and literally sneak your way into the opponent's rift? Dude, that's so cheesy. I'm disgusted that I'm even giving you these ideas. Now, if you hold on to a spark too long, it detonates. Team resurrections are enabled in rift, so make sure and help your teammates in the middle of a push, or if you are playing defense. There are no points for kills, just for spark dunks, so playing the objective is key. We'll see how long that lasts. When rift is an iron banner, the hunt is on when your team has a spark. When the music intensifies, it's time to score. Oh, so again, the hunt, like when you would capture all three zones, the hunt would activate. In this case, the hunt is actually going to activate when picking up the spark, which means weapons that come with skulking wolf, which allows your weapon kills to grant enhanced radar and remove you from the opposing radar is going to be extremely deadly. Now, there are several ways to extend matches past the time limit. Continuation, at the end of regulation time, if the current spark holder could change the outcome of the match, either the game is tied or if the current spark holder is down one point, the match continues until the current spark holder drops the spark or scores. Now, sudden death multi-spark. If there is a tie after time is up, the game enters a 90 second overtime where three sparks will spawn in midfield. Who will be the first to score? Chaos reigns. Dude, that sounds nuts. What? After a sudden death timer is up, sparks stop dropping on death and any sparks on the ground are removed. As soon as the last spark is eliminated without a score, the match ends in a tie. All right, so Bungie wants to make sure we don't have a bunch of ties on our hands for the most part, at least what I'm seeing right here. Now we have a ridiculous amount of fun testing and tuning the mode internally. It plays so very differently than anything we have in the Crucible right now. It is available during the two weeks of Iron Banner during season 17, and it will be available as a rotator in the main Crucible playlist in season 18. Wow. So they're actually going to move it into the regular Crucible playlist. So Iron Banner may actually become like the new testing grounds, like the new Crucible laps for future game modes. Now, did someone say a new map? In addition to Rift's Triumph and Return, we also created a brand new map specifically designed for this game mode. It is one of our largest maps yet, but features areas that are made for different combat styles, particularly short, mid, and long range combat. The map is called Disjunction, and it is a symmetric map with a base on either end. Three lanes with plenty of crossovers and large backfields. It takes place in the swampy pyramid area of Savathun's throne world. So expect lots of mini butted horses, transparent brown glass, and art deco designs. All right, let's take a look at this. Aesthetically, I already love it, right? Different level changes. Good. High ground for the win. A base on either side. Sounds like it's perfectly designed for Rift, right? Now, this junction will be available on day one of season 17 for all 6v6, 3v3, and free for all modes in Crucible, as well as in Iron Banner. Now, other Crucible changes. Season 17 is also bringing back zone control to Crucible. Now, zone control, for anyone that might not be familiar, is a 6v6 mode like control, only that Guardians don't get any points for kills. This is intentional because sometimes matching with random players can result in disjointed team play that can obscure objective focus. To keep all eyes on the objective, players will get points every 15 seconds for every zone that is in their control. So it is very much more diving into a defensive area control game that will allow players to highlight various skills and abilities rather than just focusing on landing that headshot. Yeah, zone control, I know like back inside of Destiny 1, sweats, zone control was always a game mode for sweats. And it was pretty fun, right? It really does focus on that objective play, which can be sort of a double-edged sword in pups. Now, each waypoint has a timer that shows when points are being awarded in addition to which team currently owns it. Because this is a team effort mode, solo capping takes 22.5 seconds versus having a full fire team playing together can cap a zone in 7.5 seconds. Stronger together isn't just said because we like Salin as voice actor. Yeah, it's also Cloud Strike City, man. Better start dusting it off, fellas. Cap all zones and dramatic music will intensify. Spooky. Now, like with everything in the game, we're always looking for feedback, especially as we continue making tweaks to the PvP experience. Zone control will be launched via a new Crucible Labs node starting in week 5, June the 21st, and will be available until the end of the season, with the exception of when Iron Banner is live. Hit us with feedback, but just remember, stay together. In addition to what's new, we're also making some tuning changes to various existing Crucible modes. Now, first is control. Teams gain one point per participant when capturing a zone, rather than one flat point. Wow. So again, leaning more into like multiple people capping a zone. Dude, this is just screaming for me to use Cloud Strike, right? This is how it was in Destiny 1. Elimination. Time limit is lower to 90 seconds to match Trials of Osiris. I do like that change. Mayhem. Points for super kills increased to 3. 
3, previously 2. Increase score target to 200, previously 150. Decrease time limit to 7 minutes, previously 8. Interesting. Rumble. Increase time limit to 10 minutes, was 8. Showdown. Increase round score targets to 15, was 10. All right, so some changes there to those game modes. Now, there are just a few more things. Still with me? Good. On to Gambit. Oh, Gambit. Gambit reputation. With the updates to the Gambit mode, with the launch of the Witch Queen, Gambit matches are taking about 60 seconds longer per match than the Beyond Light version, while still being a few minutes shorter than either Forsaken Era Gambit or Gambit Prime. We also notice that the Gambit reputation gain rate has dropped behind both Crucible and Vanguard. So we wanted to make some adjustments to bring Gambit back in line after making a similar set of adjustments for Vanguard at the start of Season 16. So we increased the base reputation gain for a match to 75, up from 50. We also increased the value of each streak to 20 per streak, up from 15. All right, man, they're really trying to get us to play. They want us playing some Gambit, man. Now this increased the top end reputation gain. I went on five streak during Mythic and Legend ranks to 250 a match, up from 200. And on the low end, I lost with no streak to 75, up from 50. Overall, gain should be around 25% faster just from this change. Now, ritual reputation streak balancing. Speaking of streaks, we've been listening to your feedback on the activity streak system that has been used for the last two seasons, and we've made a few adjustments for the seasons ahead. The activity streak now takes the sum of streak values across the four reputations, crucible, gamut, strikes, and dares, and adjusts them to a maximum of five total. If you complete a match that would bring the sum of these over five, it subtracts a point from the streak of every ritual besides the one you just played. Most importantly, entering any non-ritual activity has no effect. So for example, you play five Crucible matches, you have an activity streak value of Crucible at five. You play a Gambit match, you now have Gambit at one, Crucible at four. You play two Gambit matches, Gambit now sits at three, Crucible at two. You play one strike, you've got Vanguard at one, Gambit at two, Crucible at one. Interesting. So it actually takes away one from both Gambit and Crucible, okay? You play another strike, you now have Vanguard two, Gambit two, and Crucible one. Okay, so playing the first game when swapping to another playlist will take away from the others, but then playing another game after that will just tack on one more for the playlist you're currently playing in. I see. I'm assuming this is good. Yeah, good. Everybody? Somebody tell me if this is good. I'm assuming it is. Grandmaster rejoin. Oh my God, is it finally happening? Lastly, we have some exciting news for all of those conquerors with bad connections. Starting in season 17, if you get error coded out of a non-match made nightfall any level, you will now rejoin after login. While in this state, you won't be able to change builds or equipment in the game, the app, or on any third party websites. Yeah, we'll see how long it takes for somebody to cheese that. But again, please don't ruin this. I disconnect from time to time. Less bomb bad they both do. Nothing sucks worse than getting to the boss and someone DCing. There was actually an issue in the light blade strike. Something about going through the swamp maze, you know, with like the totems. I don't know what the deal was. We kept hitting error codes over and over again. But the good thing about this right here with Grandmaster Rejoin, similar to like Trials Rejoin, is you'll be able to join right back up. You may have to do that thing where you like Alt F4 or close down Destiny and then reopen it to log back in and it'll put you back into the nightfall. Now, Eververse changes. We want to keep players in the loop when there are any changes to Eververse, both big and small. That's very nice of you, Bungie. Just keeping us up to date. Out of your own goodwill? Now, in Season 17, Bright does acquisition from bounties and challenges will be the same as Season 16, but we're adding a voluntary option for rank purchases. Much like in Season 16, rank purchasing will be available starting in Week 3. In addition, we'll be offering a new rank package that includes 10 season ranks that you can purchase only once a season. Available in the Eververse Seasons tab on the first day of Season 17. What am I reading? Am I reading this right? What did that just say? In addition, we'll be offering a new rank package that includes 10 season ranks that you can purchase only once a season. Available in the Eververse Seasons tab on the first day of Season 17, there will be an option of the Season Pass plus 10 ranks for 2,000 silver or a standalone option of 10 season ranks for 1,000 silver if you already own the season. Whichever option you go with, the 10 ranks can only be purchased once per account each season. What the hell? I do not like this. Day one, this is available? Day one, if you want to dish out 1,000 to 2,000 silver, you can go ahead and get 10 season ranks right off the bat. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you as a content creator. Obviously, this is a huge benefit if we're willing to spend the silver. But my God, my, you've been creeping backwards on this topic, man. First, it started off with, no, you can't buy rank ups into the final two weeks. And then it was like, no, the final four weeks. And then it was like, okay, within two, three weeks of a new season, then you can buy rank ups. And now it's just like, yo, you can just buy 10 levels right off the bat at the beginning of the season. Someone let me know in the comments below if I'm in the minority here on my feelings. This makes me nervous because the trend here is not looking good. This season, it's 10 ranks. Next season, it's 25. Next season for 10,000 silver, hell, you can just get all 100 ranks the very first day.
Okay, do you see the problem here? This is not Genshin Impact, Bungie. Why is this happening? All right, that leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Guys, that's your 12 today. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.